Hello, this is Moses Jacobs for the Barra Spoken Word, and I'm talking to Mitch Maroney. Uh, and the occasion is that on the 3rd of May 2023, in case you're uh, seeing this in the future, like in 2033 or something like that, <laughs> um, that which he, uh, his Swerve magazine will um, perform at the Barra. So there will be a group of people at the Barra Spoken Word in Clonakilty, Ireland, uh, reading their writing or their poetry. And uh, the magazine, Swerve magazine, uh, was set up by Mitch Maroney over here. So um, I would ask Mitch, hello. Hello. How, how did you get the idea to set up Swerve? Um, well, first of all, thanks very, very much for the opportunity of reading at the Barrows. I mean, it's an amazing opportunity for us and we're all very excited about it. Um, Swerve kind of came about from the dark days of COVID, really. Um, we all met, I mean, we all met um, through writers groups. I mean, I'd never written before and I started writing with Denise Woods, which was an absolutely amazing experience. She was really great at getting people like me just writing. And then I joined the Cork Prose Collective with Matthew Geden. Mm -hmm. And that's where we had the idea of putting together an anthology, really. It started off as, an, as an anthology of all the writing that came out of COVID, which basically kept the same. You know, it was, there was a huge element of um, community spirit and, and um, yeah, meeting meeting every week just kept everybody on an even keel, I think. Well, certainly, certainly for me, it, it's, it was very important, actually, during COVID to meet. So that's how the magazine came about. Yeah, I, I uh, so what I, I believe you're a visual artist to start. Yeah, with. yeah. um, I'm, I'd made magazines before. I mean, I'd make books of, for my own practice, and I had made a magazine for a previous project, so it wasn't new to me. Um, but it's slightly daunting working with other people's work. You know, you do feel a huge sense of responsibility. So that was something very different. I mean, before it had just been my own images, my own work, my own words, but this was you know, working with other people's prose and poetry. So it was a huge, huge responsibility, actually quite nerve wracking because, you know, if it had all gone horribly wrong, it would have been um, awful, but it didn't go all horribly wrong. All went very well, actually, <laughs> amazingly. Okay. That's great. Um, Before we go get on to Swerve, what was the very first thing you wrote? Can you remember now? Was it a poem? Uh, no, I actually got, it was, Um, I sent in a piece to be accepted on the course about, uh, it was a sort of memoir piece of my life in Camberwell, living in a squat, actually, um, when I just left art school. And it was just a very short piece about how I'd gone back to the house um, when they'd been taken over by very rich people, actually. And I was and I was uh, somebody was moving out of my actual house. The moving people let me in to have a wander around. So it was like being a ghost in my own life, actually, because I could remember the very, very ramshackle squat I lived in with all my friends. You know, I lived with lots of French people, um, ex-art students, and it was very odd being back there in this very posh house. And, you know, you actually felt like a ghost in your own in your own life. So that was the first piece that I wrote. It was a memoir piece. OK. And because it sounds like you had a good concept about what you wanted to write, like being a ghost in your own house is like a concept, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I'm very interested in, in in the past and memory. I think memory is something I find really fascinating, actually. And the past, you know, my own past, um, other people's past. I think it's very mysterious, you know, because people people remember things in very different ways. So um, I do find memory very mysterious and fascinating, actually. And history, I'm very fascinated by history. Okay. And um, why is Swerve called Swerve? Do, do, is, is there any oh, reason? Yeah, well, this, actually, that kind of ties in with the last thing we were talking about. Um, when I was in London, I, I used to kind of haunt the bookshops, secondhand bookshops and print bookshops, uh, print shops. And I came across this uh, magazine called Verve, which um, the copy I saw was the last um, issue to, to be sent out of occupied Paris in 1940. And it was um, dedicated to French culture, and the cover was by Matisse. So inside were beautiful lithographs by Bonnard, writing by all sorts of French artists. And it was a sort of celebration of French culture through the ages, just before Paris fell, and in the face of, you know, savagery, savagery and barbarism, really, which um, in the context of COVID and what's going on in the world at the moment, um, Obviously, I couldn't call it Swerve. We had a I had a brainstorming session about what to call the magazine. And I suddenly came up with Swerve as a kind of homage to the magazine, actually. 
for the magazine the Verve. Magazine. Yeah, from the Second World War. Okay, that's a great story. Uh, Swerve is is full of, is, it's, it's brimming with poetry, prose, flash fiction, I believe. Yeah. And But it's also very visual. Yeah. Do you have a copy there? I haven't. I'm in my sister's house, actually. This this lovely posh office is uh, nothing to do with me, unfortunately. It's my sister's uh, lovely office oh, at the top of her house. So I that. haven't got one to hand. Uh, let me see if she's got I one. Have one. I have one. Oh, great. And this being Zoom, you can just get up. and Yeah. <laughs> great. Can you see it? I see it. Um, yeah, little... yeah, it's, it's very clear. Okay. Um, the visual aspect was very, very important. I felt because yeah. I think um, visual images really make people want to read. And I, we found that actually um, in practice. I mean, people pick up the magazine who would normally not read a literary journal and say, oh, actually, I would, I would read this because I like the pictures. And I think it draws people in. And um, I think that sort of interval between each piece is important. It gives you, it gives you a kind of moment of reflection and, you know, you feel you're passing on from from one piece of work to another, which I think is very important. Plus, I just think visual, visual you know, visual images are very important to me, and I wanted them to, to play an equal part in the magazine. Okay, and um, can you give an overview of the kind of people that have uh, applied and that you um, printed their work oh, from? Because awesome. you're already working on Swerve too. Aren't yeah. You? We want it to be as diverse as possible, really. So people from, of all ages, backgrounds, you know, that's what we're trying to encourage. We want to make it as diverse and welcoming as possible. I mean, I think it's um, it's a way of creating a community, actually. That's what I found, especially with readings. Um, I think we're unique in that we, we do um, arrange regular readings for our writers. You know, we've had quite a few now. Um, we started off uh, at... Um, the West Cork, the West, the West Cork Literary Festival. I was absolutely amazed. They picked <laughs> us up from, from Instagram. Actually, I wasn't expecting anything of the sort, and all of a sudden, the magazine was being launched at the festival, uh, which was amazing. And we had a reading there, which was great. It was very well attended. And since then, we have just been organising uh, readings for the writers because I just think from 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 all uh, from quite a, for a lot of reasons, they're really important. It creates a sort of sense of community between the writers. You know, we meet regularly. And it, it's, I think it's so important in the context of um, the spoken word tradition of Irish culture as well, that we do have the spoken word um, meetings very regularly, just just so that, we, you know, that our voices are heard. I think it's very important for writers' voices to be heard and that they read their own work. I think it's absolutely crucial. So that's really the main thrust of the readings. I, I really think it's very important that people are out there promoting their work, reading their work, and feeling confident about it. Because a lot of people are not confident about their writing. They should be. They're brilliant writers. But I quite often hear, oh, you know, I don't feel confident enough to read, which, you know, they should be because their writing is so good. And I think that, you know, read, reading it regularly does build your confidence. So I think it's very important for all sorts of reasons, actually. Okay. And do you feel, um, because you, you, you mentioned before, maybe not here, but I, that you, you feel that the, the, the contact, the writing kept kept people sane in a way that it was good for mental health. Oh my god, absolutely! I mean, I was it, it, during COVID. I mean, I had one COVID buddy. We would meet twice a week to watch films, but also I, I would go to my writing um, courses online. And I think Zoom was just been absolute. Uh, Zoom was a real lifesaver. So we would meet every week. Uh, firstly, with Denise. And then with Matthew, and it really was so important. I mean, I used to really look forward to those meetings, and it was something in the week that was um, consistent. So you know, every I can't remember which day. I think it was Thursday. We'd meet every Thursday, have something ready to read, and it was it was very sane keeping. Actually, you, you felt like you were being kept quite sane by by having something. I think cre doing something creative. It's very, I mean, it, you know, I, I'm, I'm, it's a cliche now, but actually in practice, you know, you just you, you just understand how important it is to do something creative, simply for your mental health, if nothing else, you know, it really you, has been that, yes. you know, writing, painting, anything. And do you feel that by especially writing, um, you reveal things about yourself, maybe inadvertently, or, or you show or oh, find God, aspects yeah, of yourself that you wouldn't normally access and let alone let other people access? I think so, yeah. I mean, especially if you're writing, say, I mean, I do um, workshops occasionally where you're just writing with a pen uh, in a notebook. 
that's when things come out unconsciously, I think. You're not really thinking about it. It's a, it's a really great way of getting things out that you're not expecting, actually. So, yeah, I think you do. You do find out about yourself. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. Um, so apart from the reading on the 3rd of May in, in the Barras, um, what are your plans with Swerve 2 and where can people find you, for example? I mean, Well, we, Waterstones um, in Cork have been selling Swerve, which is absolutely great. We, uh, again, I was thrilled because they asked us, because we were approached by Waterstones to sell it. I didn't, I didn't have to, you know, I, I just happened to be there chatting to the manager, who's great, John. And we got chatting and he said, oh, let me have a look. And he said, oh, would you like to sell it here? And he fell over. So, yeah, we've been selling it in Waterstones. Um, it's, on for, it's for sale at the UCC. And anybody who's interested can always come into the office, which is situated in Skibbereen, 8 Cork Road, <laughs> where we're also planning a small gallery. And um, we are having, we're going to, we're planning a series of artists and residents too. I mean, Swerve is going to be, um, uh, we're planning an artist in residence program so the first artist in residence is coming in june which is really exciting and um we also are very interested in creating artist writer collaborations and we've started our first one with um the novelist hannah hoare and the um artist um charlotte malik who've been working together to produce a collaborative work which is okay. really exciting you know so, so i really hope that the eight court road is going to be a little hub where writers can meet and have readings and workshops and you know, aside from the magazine, that's where the magazine is based. But the house is very important. And I, I bought it specifically with the magazine in mind, actually. I just thought, God, this house really suits what I want to do, you know. I mean, it's a workspace for me, but it's also a little meeting place and a hub for writers and artists, you know, who want to, who want to meet. A medicinal space. I mean, it's in, in well, a it's form. Not of... Yeah, it's not <laughs> doctor's surgery, which I think is kind of amazing, really. It's, it's uh, yeah, I kind of think, yeah, it's quite a nice idea that it's a healing space, you know, it's carrying on its... It's former use, actually. Okay, thank you very much, Mitch. And I look forward to um, seeing and hearing you perform on the 3rd of May. That was great, Moza. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much for the opportunity. <laughs> You're welcome.